Hello YouTubers, uh, Ben here. I'm back and I wanted to make a quick video. Um, I, I wanted to make a video on Monday, but it was uh, sub-zero temperatures here with wind chill. And I was, wanted to cut wood in the worst way, but I chickened out. Um, and now I'm having to go back to work uh, Tuesday through Thursday. But um, I have some good news regarding my wood boiler. Uh, November 7th was when we got it running this year. And so I just got my utility bill tonight, and uh, like I said in a previous video, a lot of times in the in the worst months of the winter, they they were six hundred bucks last year because I had all electric heat, um, and even this time of the month or this time of the year, I would uh, previously have expected to probably pay three hundred and fifty to four hundred bucks, um, and so. Uh, this past billing cycle, we got it started on November 7th, and so there's a whole week, the first week in November, it wasn't even running, and then I was gone on vacation, a short vacation for three days, and, and it, you know, I didn't feed it, so there's nine or ten days that it didn't even run this month, and I still had a $158 uh, up utility bill. And rather than keep the electric, uh, all electric heat on 71 like I did last year, I've been running uh, my house at 73 or 74 degrees and it just stays pegged there. And, uh, and basically I'm doing it for less than half price and that's not counting 9 or 10 days this month that I didn't, didn't run the wood stove. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, my utility bill was $158 this month and I'm wondering if this coming month because I'm running it full time now and I'm here uh, just packing the firewood into it if I need to uh, I'm wondering if I can have like $130 or $125 electric bill and that's it uh, and keep my house at um, 74 even if I can have $150 the same same thing next month uh, I'll be tickled but anyway I also wanted to show you uh, my thermostat setup and all the pipe work uh, for my boiler in my basement. I know you've seen the outside uh, boiler and, and uh, probably if you've seen one you've seen them all, but I'll show you how my, my pipe work and my heat exchangers uh, downstairs are set up. To start with, uh, these are my two thermostats that are upstairs in my living room. The bottom or blue one is for my all electric heat. And you can see that we have it set up to kick in at 65 degrees. It's saying that the house is currently 74 degrees. So if I'm uh, gone or busy for an extended period of time and I don't feed the wood stove, it'll automatically uh, maintain 65 degrees and my, my wife doesn't have to do anything. We could set that 65 degrees up or down if we wanted to, but I like it at 65. And this top one is the wood boiler. And it's set for 73, and it's telling you that the house is currently 73 degrees. And it runs, uh, you can't see it, but it's in the wall, a jumper wire to the bottom thermostat that uh, if the house isn't 73, according to the top one, it tells the squirrel fan, just the squirrel fan, from the all-electric heat to run. And so that's, I think, kind of your standard basic setup uh, for how to run a wood boiler. Now I'll show you the pipe work in the basement. Okay, stubbed, stubbed into my house is this uh, underground, uh, it's four and a half feet deep that I dug it in. I got about 60 foot of it. Uh, it's uh, two, you can see the green PEX lines and they have a nice rubber boot that, uh, that caps the, uh, the insulation pipe that, that they're in or jacketed in where it stubs into the wall. I know it's kind of a crummy uh, sack concrete job there, but Mainly I just wanted to keep dirt and as much water out as I could. Um, and then that's a 12-2 electrical wire that also uh, runs, runs out there. And it basically pow powers the solenoid on the door and uh, the pump and then the little thermostat or electrical components of the uh, wood boiler. But that green jacketed uh, PEX is ten and a half bucks a foot from the dealer. So right there was about 650, 700 bucks, but I think in the long term, um, it, I think it'll be well worth it uh, because that's where you would lose a fair amount of your heat value or burn a heck of a lot more firewood to make up for it if you don't do it right. 
So it comes in here. I've got basically all brass fittings, which which I love, and uh, the one on top is the hot uh, coming into the basement, and the one on the bottom, the green one, is the cold. It's uh, usually probably 15 degrees, give or take 10 to 15 degrees or a hair more uh, colder that returns to the wood boiler. Um, it, it just depends on if my squirrel fan is, is running and, and pushing air through the heat exchanger that's in my central uh, plenum, sucking the heat out of, out of uh, the hot water that I'm pumping through that heat exchanger. If it's not, then the return water is going to be warmer. Um, but if it is running, you know, then it's sucking the heat out. So I've got some nice uh, PEX lines here, which look pretty good, and they come up to this unit. And you've got, uh, basically you can fill it uh, from two places, and this is a thermostatic valve. Um, and so basically, according to my dealer, we put this in together. That was one of his requirements, is that we do it together both for labor purposes and then so I understand how it works. Um, it's somewhere between, I want to say 140 to 160 degrees. He said that thermostatic valve will open up and allow the hot water to uh, keep flowing through this line that's closest, closest to us. Um, if your boiler hasn't yet reached that set point, or if you've burned out your firewood and it drops below that set point, then that uh, thermostatic valve will just weep and allow a trickle of hot water to go through, but otherwise it will uh, it'll work back on itself and just allow the water to push back through the return line. And then you can uh, fill, uh, either direction here. You can hook in either port and you can uh, shut off that one and just run this one and push uh, any any uh, makeup water through the pipes to purge out air or you can shut that one off and just run through this one and try to push water back to or possibly through the pump uh, if you can. But from there these lines continue um, and they're helping put warmth. They're not insulated but I don't really care, to be honest with you, because it's making my basement a lot warmer and nicer than it ever was. Um, they're just running up here, and then they come over and make a nice loop here. And this is the business business end, or the business one. Um, it comes down and goes into the bottom of this hot water heater heat exchanger. Um, I don't know exactly what this thing cost, but it came defective from the factory. Unfortunately, you can see that uh, stainless steel hose clamp and that chunk of rubber. It's because in the, the seam that's underneath it, there's a pinhole in the weld. And it would, uh, it would uh, leak out a teardrop of water constantly. You can see the white uh, scale buildup that was from that before I had the rubber on there patching it. And I'm supposed to get a new one of those, um, but I'm not in a big hurry about it because I've got the leak stopped, but it should be covered under warranty. Um, but so this uh, bottom one here, right there, that's the hot water coming in that's circulating probably through the shell side of this heat exchanger and then comes out on that top one right there and it runs up and it goes to uh, the heat exchanger that's in the plenum for putting the warm air in my house. Um, down here, uh, the way he explained it to me, this is your hot water heater, or your water coming up through thermal rise, going through the tube side of uh, the heat exchanger. And then it comes up here to, oh, it's, it's like a de-aerator valve, but that's not right. But basically he said for the thermal rise to work, you, you got to get the air out of that line or the air to be able to escape. And so that's what that valve is supposed to do, I believe. And then the other uh, main thing is, um, let's see, you got a couple different types of pop-off valves, but the other main one is uh, right here on the left, that's a mixer valve. So the water that you're heating with your wood boiler, your hot water heater uh, water, so you don't burn yourself when you take a shower, you can set that either uh, counterclockwise or clockwise once you back off the set nut, um, and it will through this stainless steel line, uh, mix a small amount of water in with the hot that you're pulling so you don't end up scalding yourself. But those are all brass fittings and uh, 
should hold up forever for me. The other little trick that, that I came up with is how do you mount a heat exchanger on uh, this Marathon hot water heater? It's all a plastic case with insulation underneath. underneath. So I had a couple cheap uh, jack straps and I used my uh, chainsaw to cut a piece of 4x4 four four post that I had laying around and, and tightened it up fairly secure. And then we just uh, screwed uh, the brackets for the heat exchanger right to the 4x4. Four four. And, and that works, seems like it works really, really good. That heat exchanger is not sitting in that bracket perfectly because I uh, put it kitty wampus um, so I could get the rubber patch on it in the meantime until I get a different one. And then this is my main uh, heat exchanger. Um, this is what I would, I don't know if it's the right term, but I'd call it the plenum up here. The ductwork that leads into my house and all the various vents. Um, right in here, in this part of uh, the electric furnace, are the four heating elements that cost me big money uh, to run and that I don't want to run. And right above them, we cut a nice, uh, a nice opening and put this heat exchanger in there. And it's a, about four to four and a half inches thick. And it's about 18 uh, or 20 inches or so uh, square, basically. I think it's 18 inches one way and like 20 the other. But we cut a nice uh, tight hole. There's a few uh, teak screws that help hold everything together. And then some duct, uh, duct work uh, tape to help make sure that things are sealed. It might, might look a little uh, crummy, but it, it's all sealed well. No air leaks. Down in here somewhere would be where those four electric elements are. And then it runs up into... Uh, pushing that hot air, you know, that the squirrel fan, which is down in here, down towards the base of my electric furnace, is pulling in the uh, air through the cold air return and pushing it up through that heat exchanger. And if you put your, uh, you put your hand on here, uh, you, you can touch it, but you can't hold your hand there, or uh, it, it feels like it would burn you. That's, that's how nice and hot that water coming in from the boiler is making it. Um, just fed the wood boiler about a half hour ago before I ate supper and I had fed it at about 5:45 this morning with soft wood uh, it was 12 degrees today and so it ran from 5:45 this morning until 7:30 tonight when I got home and it was still 180 180 degrees on the boiler the set points 185 uh, so I know I'm talking a little fast I'm not a uh, professional at this or anywhere close but hopefully you can uh, understand what I'm saying and then this is the return line that just goes back out here like the other one and then it goes uh, back over there to that boot to go back to the boiler thanks for watching guys I appreciate it